Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Adrian of Cairo Center. And today, using a special computer program known as a virtual demonstrator, I'd like to share with you the difference between a disc bulge and a disc herniation. Now, a disc is a shock absorbing mechanism that fits between each of your vertebrae to protect your spine from the effects of gravitational injury. So as not to confuse the difference between a vertebrae and a disc, these are the bony vertebrae. And these are the discs that fit between them. And together, you can see that they all fit together much like the links of a chain. Indeed, just like a chain, your spine is only as strong as its weakest link. And for most people, the weakest link in their spine is a damaged disc, whether it be thinned, decayed, degenerated, bulged, or herniated. Now, moving to our virtual demonstrator, here we have both the top and a side view of the lumbar spine. Here we have the disc itself. This is the spinal cord. And these are the spinal nerve roots that come off the cord and exit into the body through the vertebrae. This long triangular shaped bone is known as the spinous process. It's actually the back part, the back half of the vertebrae. And it's the part where if you run your hand down the midline of your back, you can actually feel it bulging out under the skin. Now over here to the side, once again, these are the vertebrae and these are the discs that fit between them, the shock absorbers. And these discs are important not only for shock absorption, but also to provide a spacing mechanism between the vertebrae. And that's important because it provides for this large opening here known as a foramen. And a foramen is just a Latin word meaning large hole. And this hole is where these nerves exit through the spine out into the body. Now, moving over here to our disc itself, you can see that from the top view, uh, many people describe the disc looking much like a jelly-filled donut, or others describe it as an egg lying in a pan. The outer wall of the disc is known as the annulus, and it's layered together much like the rings of an onion. And it contains, or it holds in, a pressurized jelly-like substance that is filled full of nutrients. Together, these two entities form your spinal shock absorbers, once again, known as a spinal disc. Now, disc bulges, also known as disc protrusions, occur when the outer wall of the disc, the annulus, weakens through various causes and begins tearing. When it tears, the pressurized fluid, the nucleus inside, seeks the path of least resistance outside. Much like a stream finds a path of least resistance, as it runs down a hill or across the ground. With the torn area of the wall being the weakest, the pressure from the inside forms a bulge on that part of the disc. Much like a weak spot on the rubber of an inner tube will form a bubble on the inner tube itself. The more the fibers of the outer wall tear, the larger the disc bulge becomes. This bubble, or bulge, will then put pressure against the nerve roots coming off the spine and most often cause pain, numbness, or tingling in either the back, the legs, or both. Disc most often bulge one of three ways. Either to the right and back, to the left and back, or straight back against the spinal cord itself. And they can either be very small in nature, medium size, or they can be classified as very large bulges. Discs that bulge to the right usually cause pain and other symptoms in the right lower back and or into the right leg, foot, or toes. Likewise, a disc that bulges on the left will send symptoms of pain, numbness, burning, tingling, or weakness into the left lower back and into the left lower extremity. In cases where the bulge occurs straight back and applies pressure directly on the spinal cord itself, it can cause all the symptoms we just described to enter into either the right side of the back and leg, the left side of the back and leg, or it can go back and forth from one side to the other, or it can cause pain on both sides of the back and send symptoms into both legs at the same time. Now, in comparison to a disc bulge, a disc herniation, also known as a disc rupture, 
is when the outer wall of the disc, once again known as the annulus, totally gives way, allowing for the pressurized fluids from the inside to totally escape outwards. This is known as a total disc failure and is much like popping a water balloon with a pin. When this happens, the weight of your spine then collapses down upon the nerve and very often creates extremely severe pain. It can cause bowel or bladder problems, as well as weakness in the muscles of the legs, which of course is in addition to the pain, numbness, soreness, and other symptoms we've previously described. A person wants to do everything they can to prevent a disc bulge from becoming a disc herniation, because with a herniation, the non-surgical resolution for the problem usually becomes more difficult, and the chances of having to have spinal surgery are often greatly enhanced. And of one final note, it's important to understand that the same demonstration that we just shared with you about disc bulges and herniations of the lower back also occur in the cervical spine or the neck. Disc bulges of the neck can not only cause pain in the neck, but they can go up into the head and cause head pain, as well as venture into the arms with arm pain, numbness, tingling, weakness, all the way into the hands and the fingers. Now, most disc bulges can be handled non-surgically with the proper kinds of chiropractic techniques. But occasionally, surgery is necessary in severe disc challenges where they are simply non-responsive to conservative methods. And when so, I'm certainly a proponent of surgery. I've seen it benefit many people. But it's important to understand that surgery is only successful in spinal disc conditions about 50% of the time. When it's successful, it's considered a true blessing. But when it fails, as it does, again, in about 50% of all cases, in those cases known as failed back surgery syndrome, it often places a person on an extremely difficult path for the rest of their lives. Failed back surgery is seldom the fault of the surgeon, but rather because the spine is extremely intricate in its design. The sad part about a disc bulge is that if it were located on the outside of your body, you could take a pair of fingernail clippers and snip it off. But because it isn't, with some disc bulges, it's necessary to cut away much of your good spinal structure just to reach the area of the ball so the pressure can be removed, leaving a person with a weakened spinal structure from there on. For that reason and many others as well, one is wise to do all they can to exhaust every possible non-surgical alternative available to them before submitting to spinal surgery. At Cairo Center, we have several different types of non-surgical disc decompression equipment available to provide us with many options in treating troublesome disc conditions. So if a troubled disc is interfering with your life, I invite you to give me a call here at Cairo Center. Let you and I sit down and investigate your challenge and see if any of the many non-surgical treatments we have available for troubled disc may be able to help see you through your pain and or avoid spinal surgery. All of us here at Cairo Center pledge to do all we can to help you overcome your trouble and concern coming from a troubled spinal disc. Once again, I'm Dr. Jack Adrian of Cairo Center. I very much hope this information has been valuable to you, and I want to thank you for watching.